Well, hello there. Welcome to Back to Basics, an IDP podcast in association with Schools Management Plus. I'm Simon Lowell, the Director of Development at Marlborough College and Chair of IDPE. Each week in this podcast, we will hear from an experienced development leader who is part of IDPE's New to Development programme and an expert in a particular area of fundraising and engagement. And today, I'm delighted to be joined by Christine McClendon, Deputy Director of Development at Magdalen College School in Oxford. And Christina is going to be sharing her experience and expertise on regular giving programmes. Welcome, Christina. Thanks for having me, Simon. It's a pleasure. Now, we're going to start, as is traditional, with a short icebreaker question, which is, what's the fundraising or engagement idea that you wish you'd thought of and why? I wish I had thought of giving days. Uh, coming from a background of fundraising in the US, uh, they've been happening there for lots of years. I think it's a great way to bring together the community um, and really harness best practice to fundraise for an institution. Absolutely. Now, talking of the US, you've been at Malden College School for four years, but before that you worked for NYU in the United States. So you've got experience of both countries. Uh, what do you think development development in the UK can learn from the US? I think there's a lot around a surround sound strategy in the US um, in terms of asking, um, incorporating a lot of different channels in your campaigns um, that the US does very well and that the UK is still learning about. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd also say that we just ask a lot more. um, Mm. And sometimes that might not be appropriate for the UK audiences, but I think it it becomes part of this culture of philanthropy that I think we're all looking to develop here. And what do you think, uh, reversely, what do you think the US could learn from the UK? In my experience, I have found fundraising in the UK to be uh, very relationship based and a lot of people giving out of altruism because they want to make a difference. They have a deep connection with the institution or organization they're giving to. Whereas in the US, it's always felt a little bit more transactional. Um, You know, there's a lot of tax benefits, no matter what tax bracket you're in. Um, And it's it's so part of the course in the US that um, there's not a lot of... uh, you, you know, you don't need to tell them necessarily the impact that you're making in the same ways that, you know, that's part of the culture here. Yeah, see, I like that because we so often talk about, you know, the US has a better culture of giving. It's got bigger gifts, more donors. And we rarely, I think, think about the UK. And actually, yes, we might have uh, fewer big gifts and fewer donors. But maybe, as you say, those donors that do give, um, you know, it's more important. The the they They feel more strongly... Um, about the donation they're making. Absolutely. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, well, the main theme of the podcast today is regular giving. Uh, now, these, for those who don't know, uh, are fundraising appeals, which can be via direct mail, telephone, email, online, social media. And the aim is to create a sustainable, regular fundraising income. So, Christina, how important do you think regular giving is as part of a holistic fundraising program? So I think regular giving is essential. It's the backbone to any successful fundraising or development program um, for a few reasons. I think it's an opportunity for the community that you're working with to raise their hand and say, I'd like to join you. Um, I support what you're doing. And hopefully in time, you will build upon that sort of support and move people along the donor journey and the donor pipeline um, to get them into those mid-level gifts and those major gifts. Um, but the you know the regular giving part, it's the first instance that you're gonna have to, to connect with your community. Yeah, and have you seen that for your career that the regular giving is like the small seeds scattered on the ground and then over time, you know, that will grow into bigger and bigger gifts? Absolutely. And I think that there's lots of ways that programs can really harness that energy, um, whether it's identifying, you know, mid-level or major gift prospects in a giving day or a telethon because they've given a bit more than you asked for or, you know, whatever that looks like. Um, you could really see the seeds of that. I'd say uh, at MCS, we've also seen lots of donors who maybe started their journey five years ago through our telephone program now become some of our major donors. Um, and it's great to really see that progress and and um, see how that relationship can grow. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, and a really important connection between the two. Um, so tell me about a successful regular giving initiative. 
in May 2020 during COVID. It, I was asked to, to plan a campaign. It was sort of our first regular giving campaign at MCS in, in several years around hardship and bursary support. And um, I brought a lot of best practice from my time at NYU in terms of making it a surround sound approach. So we started with a digital campaign. It ran over several months. Um, we had match funding. We sent out personalized ask strings to everybody we asked um, based off their previous giving or their levels of engagement. And, and then we added in a mail component um, when, when the time was right, you know, regarding lockdown and everything. Um, and I think it was really, it was impactful, not just because the ask was important and significant um, for our community, but also because we showed the community that we know, we, we know who they are. We know where their interests are. We incorporated historic benefactors. We talked a lot about things that are really relevant to the MCS community. And it allowed people to really r rally behind this campaign. Amazing. And uh, sounds like, um, you know, multi-channel and targeted, which were the kind of things you said, you know, you, the US does so well. Now, we, people always talk about success and that's important. But what about something that didn't work as well? Because it's equally important to learn from uh, things that don't work out. So I've definitely been in a few roles where uh, the institution or senior leadership have really asked us to fundraise for a specific project um, via direct mail, via email, where um, we weren't necessarily using data-driven decisions to build that case for support and build the appropriate ask levels. And um, they didn't really perform that well because it wasn't, it wasn't really listening to our community and and what they needed um, at the time. So I think that's really interesting because uh, it's not uncommon for there to be unrealistic expectations uh, at kind of leadership level um, and for projects to be put forward by leadership which actually don't have any data, feasibility, prospects, <laughs> um, maybe even case of support behind them and then unrealistic targets set. But actually that's often at a major gift level, but interesting that that can also trickle down to the kind of regular giving level and start to affect things like direct mail. Absolutely. I think it comes down to the fact that we know that direct mail doesn't necessarily perform as well as it used to. And mm. there's definitely this pressure that we can feel as fundraisers at any level to have that perform really well. And so we need to be asking for, you know, several hundred pounds when that maybe isn't the, the mechanism that's the right thing um, for donors at that level. Sure. And tell me about an unexpected outcome from your regular giving programs. So I think for us at Maudlin College School, especially um, introducing the Giving Day over the last three years has been really fun. Um, and it's produced a little bit of levity. And I think it's really actually helped us in terms of our reputation, not just within IDPE and the development sector, but also um, other heads. Um, MCS has famously introduced a uh, senior leadership team music video as part of our Giving Day comms. And um, lots of people have come up to me to compliment the fact that our head was willing to participate in this way and do this. And it did really, um, I think, resonate with a lot of our alumni and parents because we have such a strong music and singing and production and performance part of the school community. Um, and I think everybody was actually surprised that it was fun. Like we did bring the fun to the fundraising. Um, and, you know, they were a little hesitant when I had suggested that as an idea. So I've seen this and uh, uh, it is fun, but it's quite clever, isn't it? Because your school, I mean, that's part of its history. Singing has been an important part of the school's history and its, and its ethos. So I think whenever you tie fundraising back to you know what the school was founded for, that's really powerful, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's just, it's great. I, I wish every head could get behind um, the school traditions, you know, wherever <laughs> they're at in that way. Um we need a singing head podcast. We're going to have a whole series of these things um, before we know it. Uh, and you talked a bit about the US. Obviously, they do a lot more asking in the US. Um, what about the kind of rhythm of regular giving then in the UK? How do you see that? So it's been really great to be in a program for almost five years and really see the ways that 
um, we can build a rhythm of regular giving through giving days, through telethons, through direct mail, other digital asks, um, through our donor impact report. And um, I think for us, we have found it really important to be asking our community at least once a year in some big way. Um, and everybody, everyone from alumni to parents to former parents. And, you know, they know that that giving day is coming or that telethon is coming and that they're going to be asked to support the school. This is what they're going to be asked to support. Um, it, it makes my job as a fundraiser a bit easier. Um, not easy, but slightly better knowing that it's just become part of the culture. And I think that rhythm, it, it allows you to really establish that culture with confidence, um, which has been great, I think. Yeah, very wise advice, I think, to have that regular rhythm. And it might be that rhythm is slightly different to the rhythm in the US, in the UK, but have a, a rhythm nonetheless. Um, right, finally, final question then. What's the one bit of advice you wished you'd been given when you started out? Don't be afraid to ask your community to give. Don't be afraid to ask. That's a very good fundraising <laughs> motto, isn't it? <laughs> I just think there's a lot of hesitation um, at times, especially through, you know, times of crisis or or when there's a lot of change and uncertainty. And I feel like the the inclination is to sort of back down and, and to think, oh, we, we sh it's not right. We shouldn't do this. But um, I feel like it gives you an opportunity to really build that case and really um, illustrate to your community why donations make such a big impact. Um, and yeah, don't don't be afraid, I think. When you ask, you shall receive, hopefully. <laughs> well, my, my favourite motto is actually the uh, on fundraising comes from the, the Roman philosopher Seneca, who said, he who asks timidly invites refusal. I think that's kind of similar. Um, don't be afraid to ask. And also don't be afraid to ask confidently. Absolutely. Yes, that's it. <laughs> very good. Well, that's, that's a very positive note to end on. Um, thank you, Christina, so much for sharing your time and expertise today. And really interesting to hear about your uh, experience on both sides of the pond and uh, your approach to regular giving at Morden College School. Finally, a reminder uh, that you can hear more from Christina talking about regular giving as part of IDP's New to Development programme, which launches next month and provides an introduction to all of the fundamentals of schools fundraising and engagement. So. If you're new to the sector or in the process of setting up a development office at your school, head to the IDP website to find out more. Thanks for listening. <laughs>